Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. So recently I've posted two videos utilizing the iPad, the Synology NAS and the Docker containers. One was about running the DaVinci server for video editing and the other one was about the VS Code for coding and also using the Copilot extension. For those who are interested, the links will be in the description. Today will be a more general topic to measure the speed of the internet and the local network. And of course, you don't have to have a Synology NAS. It can be any computer that can run Docker containers. All right, so feel free to use the chapters and without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's start with a speed test of the local network. You may have a blazing fast internet speeds coming to your router, but then at home, you may have old cables, you may have a weak Wi-Fi, you may have some interference, and that all may affect and slow down the local speeds. Before we proceed, if you plan to use Synology NAS to run Docker containers, be sure that it supports running them. So for this, let's go to the Synology NAS, open the package manager, and here we can search either for container manager, not the SAN manager, the container manager. It's absent here because it's an older NAS. And if it's absent, then search for Docker. And if you see either this or that in your package manager, it means that your NAS supports running Docker containers. If your Synology NAS could find neither of these, then go to this link, it will be in the description, which describes how to install Docker on unsupported Synology NAS. And there is quite a long list of the models that this tutorial applies to. The first thing that we should do is to enable SSH access. So we could access our Synology NAS through the terminal and perform all the necessary commands in the future. If you have it enabled, then you can move to the next step. If you don't, then bear with me, I will show you how to do it. So let's close the package manager. We don't need it for now. Let's switch to the control panel, go to the terminal and SNMP, and in the tab called terminal, check the enable SSH service. It's a good habit to have a custom port instead of the default one. In my examples, I use 3535, but of course you can use any port of your choice. And also it's a good habit to have a node of everything that we have set. So let's create a new node and say DSM SSH port 3535. Okay, and then we click apply, click okay, and the SSH service is enabled now. Now, it's a good habit to have SSH access to be disabled at all times unless we need it, like now. So once you're done with this tutorial, I highly recommend you to come back here and disable the SSH access in security reasons. Now let's create a folder for all our Docker containers, if you haven't already. For this, let's go to the shared folder, click create, create, and then I will just name it Docker. I don't need the recycle bin. And you can select any volume from these that are available for your NAS. Now I have just one volume. You can select any of your choice, but do remember the number of the volume that you've selected. Okay, let's go through these screens, wait a bit, and then we will have our Docker folder. Now it's time for us to install the package manager or Docker. So let's open the package center. And again, on the newer versions, it will be called Container Manager. In my older NAS, it's called simply Docker. So I will install what's available. All right, it's installed. And now we need to switch to our SSH client. Now, if you're running a Mac, then the SSH client is built in the terminal by default. So what you can do, type SSH, and then the name of your Synology user, then add, and then the IP address of your Synology DSM. And because we've set up the custom port, then we will have to type also minus P, the parameter that specifies the port, and then type 3535. Then we'll have to type yes, so that we want this fingerprint to be added. And of course, the password of our user. And now we can access our Synology NAS. And if you're using Windows 11 on the latest versions, it also supports SSH client out of the box and the PowerShell. But because I use an iPad, 
I will use the Terminus app. Let me open it. And I will add a new host. So here the label will be, I don't know, Synology NAS. The IP will be the IP of our Synology, which is this one. We need SSH, so it will be turned on. We set up the custom port, so instead of 22, we use 3535. We specify the username of our NAS and the password of our user. Now you can leave the password blank and then it will ask you every time for the password when it connects. I will put it inside here. And we have our connection, so let's click. It will ask us to add the fingerprint. Let's do that. And we are connected. Now let's go to the description of this video and download the code snippets so you don't have to retype them manually. Of course, you may use the files app and you'll see the snippets like this, but I will copy and open it in some other text editor. For my purpose, I will use code app. It's a paid app, so you don't have to buy it. You can use any text editor, even the files app. I just find it quite nice. And here is the command that we will need to run. So it will run Docker container, and we specify that it has to restart unless we stop it manually. So it's good if you restart your Synology NAS and you want this container to be restarted automatically. Then we name it as Open Speed Test. We don't want any output messages during the installation, so we specify the flag minus D. And then we map two ports. 3000 for the HTTP requests and 3001 for HTTPS requests. And then we specify the image that we will be using. So let's copy this to our SSH client. Here it is. And paste it. Click enter and it will ask us for the password. And now it will download this image from the internet and we'll try to run it. After it's done, we have two ways of testing the result. We can open an HTTPS IP address of our Synology NAS and then add colon and 3001. It's the HTTPS port that we've specified. Or we can do the HTTP request, but in this case, we will need to use the port 3000. So here I'm measuring the speed between the iPad, which is connected over the Wi-Fi to my router, and the router is connected to the Synology NAS via the cable. And then we can switch to the laptop, which is connected to the router with the cable, and the router is connected to the Synology with the cable as well, and measure the speed here. Do note though that you will be limited by the speed of the Ethernet port of your Synology NAS because basically we are measuring the speed between the Synology NAS and your device. So if your Ethernet port of the Synology is just one gigabit, you won't be able to measure the speeds higher than that. Before we move on, just one question. Have you ever had cables in such a mess? If you have, then this accessory from MagTame might help you. It's a USB 4 cable compatible with Thunderbolt 4, and it has magnets inside so it will keep its shape no matter what. I think it's simple yet smart. And if you wish, you can adjust the diameter to your needs. It's pretty flexible. And for those of us who owns a MacBook yet never carries the MagSafe cable, they have this USB-C to the MagSafe adapter. And it comes in handy when all the Thunderbolt ports are busy, but your MacBook runs out of the battery. The light works as expected, orange for charging, and green for fully charged, and it never gets uncomfortably hot compared to similar accessories that I've tested before. Non-affiliated links will be in the description. All right, we're done with measuring the local network. Let's do the internet measurement now. And I know that speedtest.net exists. <laughs> Don't worry. And actually, this source code that we're going to use is based on speedtest.net. So you should see some familiar texts. Okay, I assume that you've already seen the steps above. So you've checked that your NAS supports Docker containers, you've enabled the SSH access, created the Docker folder, installed the container manager, and connected to your DSM via SSH. So let's go to the SSH client again and connect to our DSM. Oh, and 
I'll go back to my desk. For this one, we need to know the ID of our user and the group ID. For this, let's simply switch to our SSH client. And we are already in our Synology NAS, connect it, and type ID. And here it gives us the UID and GID, so the user ID and the group ID of our user. And this is exactly what we need. So let's switch to our notes and put a note about that. So the user ID is 1026 and group ID is 100. Okay, so now let's look at another code snippet that we would find in the description to this video. So this is the command that will run and launch our speed test Docker container. We'll give it a name, which will be speed test minus tracker. It will restart every time Synology NAS is being restarted. We will map one port, 80 on the Docker side and 8999 on the Synology side. You may pick any port that you want. Now the user ID has to be the same as the user ID from here. So we'll change it from 1000 to 1026. Then the group ID is conveniently already set as 100. Now we need the app key in order to launch our container. For this, let's switch to our browser and you will need to go to this URL. And here you will see the app key. You'll need to copy it and paste over here. Now we need to make sure that we have this directory. Right now it says volume one, docker speed test minus internet. If we go back to our DSM and open the file station, we already have the docker folder that we've created and it says that it's located at the volume one. Now, if you'll have it not at the volume one, but on volume two, three or whatever, you will need to change this number in the path of the run command. And also inside the Docker folder, we need to create another folder, which is speed test minus internet. Click OK. Now let's return back to our script. Now again, change this number if it's not one. And we're good to go. So let's copy this script. Go to the SSH client, paste it. Click Enter. We'll need to put our password here and it will start loading this image and compiling it. And in a few moments, we are already done. So let's give it a test. So let's open a new tab, type the IP address of our Synology NAS, colon, and then the port that we've used in our run script, which is 8999. Click Enter. Now, don't worry, I didn't forget to set up an email or password. We will just use the predefined values here and it will let us in. So let's do admin at example.com and the password will be the word password. Let's click remember me, sign in. And here we are at the dashboard of the speed test tracker. Now we can just run the speed test and see the results. They have an extensive documentation with lots of screenshots, examples, so you won't get lost. And I highly recommend you to check it out to unlock its full potential. So this time we'll cut it short and I hope it was useful to you. If you're interested in video editing, you might want to check the video about the DaVinci server. And if you're into coding, check the video about the VS code running in a Docker container. Hit a like and consider subscribing. It's been Alex and see you at the Geeks table. Bye-bye.